At the heart of Europe's Alpine chain lies the beautiful country of Switzerland, which is a union of 26 separate regions or cantons, one of the smallest being Canton Appenzell, which is located in the northeastern corner of the Confederation. Despite its small size, the canton is home to a progressive railway network, the Appenzell Railways Group, which has developed over the years and now runs regular services over almost 60 kilometers of meter gauge track. The first stretch of line between Winkeln and Urnesch was opened by the Schweizerische Lokalbahnen in 1875, the second narrow gauge railway to be built in Switzerland. The company was renamed the Appenzeller Bahn a decade later, when the track was extended to Appenzell. The line from Winkeln to Herisau was replaced in 1913 by a new route beginning at Gossau. In 1912, the Saintisbahn opened a tourist route between Appenzell and Wasserauen, which was absorbed by the AB in 1947, enabling the running of through services from Gossau to Wasserauen. Meanwhile, to the north, the Appenzeller Strassenbahn had opened a line using rack assistance from St. Gallen to Gais in 1889, with an extension to Appenzell completed 15 years later. The company underwent a change of name in 1931 to become the St. Gallen Gais Appenzell Railway, or SGA. In 1911, the Altstaden Gais Railway Company opened a rack line over the mountain ridge into the Rhine Valley which merged with the SGA in 1947. The AB and SGA finally amalgamated in 1988 and are today run under a common management, resulting in one railway group serving the entire canton. Our journey around the Appenzell network begins at Gossau, the start of the AB line. The first station was built here in the middle of the 19th century for the opening of the standard gauge line between Winterthur and St. Gallen. In 1913, this was rebuilt to include the meter gauge tracks of the Appenzell Railway, which lie on the south side of the complex. The track climbed steadily up the hillside, leaving the SBB main line to run along the valley floor. We must gain over 100 metres in height during the five-kilometre journey from Gossau to Heirisau. Appenzell's gently rolling countryside provided few obstructions for the railway builders, so the 35-metre-long Ziegelhutter Tunnel is one of only two such excavations along the entire AB network. On the outskirts of Heirisau, our metre gauge track passes over the standard gauge line of the bodensee togenberg Railway which runs along the western edge of Canton Appenzell on its route between Wartwil and Hormenshorn. The BT depot lies between the two different tracks. The station at Heirisau is an important one on the AB network and the sidings are full of a variety of stock waiting to be brought into service. There's been a settlement at Heirisau for well over a thousand years, although in 1559 an horrendous fire destroyed much of the town centre. Many of the beautiful painted houses which grace the elegant squares and streets date back to the 18th century, and their colourful facades are kept in superb condition. More modern buildings blend harmoniously with traditional architectural styles and a stroll round the town affords great pleasure. Heirisau is the administrative centre of the half-canton of Ausserroden. Canton Appenzell, which joined the Swiss Confederation in 1513, was subdivided after the Reformation into two regions, or Roden. The northern region, Inner Roden, remained Catholic, while the southern half, Ausserroden embraced the new Protestant religion. Heirisau is also the administrative centre for the Appenzell Railways Group, and the depot is home to an interesting mixture of rolling stock from various periods of the line's history. 
The AB line ran with steam for the first 60 years of its existence and a total of eight locomotives were purchased between 1874 and 1910. Following electrification in the 1930s, these were gradually phased out, two being sold to the Ethiopian railways while the remainder were broken up. However, steam is still in evidence at Heirisau, as the AB is the proud possessor of a handsome mogul locomotive, formerly the property of a nearby company. This magnificent G34 engine was bought by the Raishan Railway in 1902 from SLM, joining their fleet as loco number 14 and giving 70 years of sterling service before her retirement. She was acquired by the Appenzell Railway in the 1970s and has become a firm favourite locally, hauling special excursion trains along the Gossau to Wasserauen line on many weekends during the summer. She's capable of a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour, but the slightly gentler gradients of the Appenzell are kinder to this grand old lady than some of the steeper ascents she tackled in her youth on the Raishan system. When the AB electrified their line in 1933, they purchased four ABE 44 motor baggage cars, manufactured by SIG with electrical apparatus by Ehrlichen. These were joined in the late 1940s by two further ABE 44s of a completely different design, which are still running well after 50 years in service. The fleet was upgraded in 1968 when two BDE 44 motor baggage cars were acquired from FFA. These were augmented in 1986 by a further three BDE 44 motor coaches of a different design, which during summer months operate as three car sets. We're making our journey to Wasserauen in one of the latest BDE 44 rail cars, which came into service in the summer of 1993 and are almost identical in design to those purchased in the 1980s. These give a comfortable ride for both passengers and driver. Just outside the station, the track passes through the present Mühleboul Tunnel, constructed in 1912 after the Appenzellbahn station moved down to the site alongside the Bodensee Toggenberg station. The line between Heirisau and Urnesh was opened on the 21st of September 1875 and proved popular right from the start. The railway not only makes an indispensable contribution to the tourist industry, for which this region is renowned, but is also a popular means of everyday transport for school children and adults alike. At Waldstadt, an unusual wagon is stabled in the sidings. This does not contain the normal industrial or agricultural produce, for the colorful exterior proclaims that it is the Bibliobahn, or mobile library carriage, which our train brought here earlier in the day. This coach was specially modified at the Gais depot from one of the earlier St. Gallen Appenzell carriages, number AB53, dating from 1909. The Bibliobar now travels from station to station along the network, providing the Appenzell community with this much appreciated and well-supported service. Our way along the AB line continues due south towards Urnesh.
Our train has a top speed of 75 kilometers per hour and its four traction motors are capable of delivering 1100 horsepower to the wheels. The Appenzell landscape is dotted with traditional wooden farmhouses. New buildings must be designed in keeping with their older neighbors. However, modern insulation is incorporated into the construction to help conserve heat during the cold winter months. The line runs along the valley of the river Urnesh, whose source is to be found in the Saintis mountain range. These waters will join the river Rhine and flow through Germany and Holland into the North Sea. Urnesh was the terminus of the original Schweizerische Lokalbahnen line, and travelers were forced to alight here and continue their journey by other means. Today the station is still a busy one, with passengers alighting to stroll round the picturesque village, or perhaps continue by post bus to visit one of the region's premier attractions. The Saintis, at over two and a half thousand meters above sea level, is the highest mountain in northeastern Switzerland. However, the ascent need not be arduous, as a cable car has been operating from Schweigalp since the 1930s. The original structure was replaced in 1974 by a swift modern system, able to lift a hundred people up the rock face in only seven minutes. For the sharp-eyed, there's the possibility of glimpsing one of the mountain goats who live on the screes around the peak. The mountains are a paradise for walkers, with breathtaking views wherever you look. The 360-degree panorama, visible from this rocky pinnacle, stretches into Austria and Liechtenstein, as well as Switzerland. Each year, tourists making the ascent to the Saintis summit have a close encounter with a weather station and what could be described as a tall story. It's a powerful transmitter visible over a wide area belonging to the PTT, the Swiss National Post and Telephone Company, and is not only an international telecommunications link, but also beams radio and television signals over the surrounding cantons. The line from Urnesh to Appenzell was opened in two stages during 1886. In August, the tracks had reached Gontenbad, with the link to Appenzell being completed two months later. Immediately after leaving the station, the line makes a 100-meter radius horseshoe curve to cross the river and double back on itself down the valley. There are frequent services running along the Appenzell railway network, and the single track operation means that the busy timetable must be carefully monitored and services run to time. We've passed the down train at Urnesh, and the Heiris Aubound set is clearly visible across the river, running in parallel with our cars.
We now pass over the border from the half canton of Ausserroden to that of Innerroden, and the transition into the Catholic area is immediately noticeable as we pass the Capuchin cloister of Leiden Christi. At Jakobsbad, the base station of the Kronberg cable car is situated just outside the station, allowing ease of access to travelers wishing to continue their journey into the mountains. Gonten is a scheduled passing place, and we cross here with number 46, Wahlstadt, one of the BDE 44 motor baggage cars which has been operating since the late 1960s. The name Wahlstadt was previously borne by steam locomotive number 5. This is the highest stretch of the line to Wasserauen, although the gently rolling nature of the terrain means that we have only climbed 260 meters since the start of the journey at Gossau. The Kaubach Viaduct is the only major bridge along the Gossau to Wasserauen line, its 99 meter length being largely hidden by trees. Today's concrete structure was built in 1974 to replace an earlier steel arch girder bridge whose load capacity was insufficient for the increased traffic along the route. Our tracks pass through lush farming countryside grazing for the cows whose milk is turned into the world-famous Appenzell cheese. The region is also popular with hikers, and there's a special barefoot walk down to Appenzell town, which proves popular during the summer months. There's a great tradition in the canton for allowing feet their freedom, and local children often walk or cycle to school unshod during the summer months. The station at Arpenzell has been a busy junction since the beginning of the 20th century. The first trains arrived here in October 1886 with the opening of the AB line and were joined in 1904 by the service from St. Gallen. 
Since 1912, it's also been the point of departure for the Saint-Espan, a tourist railway taking visitors to the mountain resort of Wasserauen. Ambitious plans to extend the line up the saint is mountain had to be abandoned due to financial constraints. The company was renamed the appenzell wasserauen weisbad Railway in 1939. Two of the old SB coaches survive and are often to be seen along the gossau wasserauen route taking passengers on special outings. The line now turns south along the Sitter River Valley into the heart of the Alpstein mountain chain. On the outskirts of Appenzell Station, the SGA track swings away to the left on its way north to Gais. Unlike the AB, the saint barn used electric traction from the opening of its line, their motor baggage cars running on 1,000 volts DC. In 1949, after amalgamation with the Appenzell barn, the voltage was increased 1,500 DC, and for the first time, a single rail car was able to take passengers along the whole journey from Gossau to Wasserauen. The Onion Dome Church of Schwende, though built in traditional style, actually dates from the 1920s. High mountains rise sharply from the valley floor, and their precipices are a magnet for parasenders who festoon the skies in summer like a cloud of multicolored butterflies. The end of the line at Wasserauen is surrounded by grassy alps, which provide summer grazing for herds of Appenzell cows. In autumn, these are driven down to pastures around the lower line farmsteads in a traditional procession. The large bells worn by the prize cows are made by local craftsmen, and the shops in Appenzell town are full of fine examples of this art. Appenzell, chief town of Innerroden, takes its name from the Latin Abaticella, reflecting its origins as part of the domain of St. Gallen Abbey. Although there's been a settlement here since the 9th century, most of the beautifully painted houses were built after 1560, when a fire devastated the town. The Landsgemeinde, or traditional open-air parliament, is held here every April to decide cantonal issues. Appenzell was the last of the Swiss cantons to give women the vote, only enfranchising them in 1991. The station has been an integral part of the town since the end of the 19th century, and up to the 1930s, the smell and sounds of steam were a constant reminder of its presence. The track between Appenzell and St. Gallen includes rack sections. 
Four HG23 locomotives were purchased from SLM for the opening of the line from saint gallen to Gais in 1889. These were joined by two HG24 engines when the line was extended to Appenzell in 1904, with two further HG24 machines added in 1909, bringing the fleet to eight. Today, none of the steam locomotives remain, but we follow the line they once ran along on our way north towards Gais. The viaduct over the river Sitter dominates the valley. Its succession of stone arches and central girder span combine to form a total length of 299 meters. The train passes over the 64 meter long Hirschberg viaduct across the road to Sankt Gallen before looping round above Appenzell. The line runs alongside this highway for much of the remainder of the journey. We climb steadily up gradients of 1 in 15 to Samuelplatz, the highest station on this stretch of the line, and a passing place where the train from saint Gallen is waiting for us to clear the track. The SGA railway was electrified on the 23rd of January 1931 with motor coaches operating at 1500 DC, drawing their power from the Swiss national grid through substations along the line. The village of Gais suffered a severe fire in 1780, and many of the beautiful timber houses with their rows of windows and curved gables date from the period of rebuilding. On the approach to Gais station, we make another extremely tight curve to swing the train back on itself before entering the platform. This was the terminus of the line from St. Galin for the first 15 years and the natural place for the company to situate its depot. The Gaïs sheds are a busy place with dedicated technicians kept constantly occupied repairing and restoring stock for the company. The depot was rebuilt in two stages in 1981 and 1989 on the site of the original complex. Initially, the SGA rail cars and carriages sported a green and cream livery, but today all trains are being repainted in the red and light grey AB group colours. The three ABDEH44 motor baggage cars purchased by the SGA in 1953 have just been renovated, and we have the opportunity of riding with them along the line between Gais and Arstetten, which opened on the 18th of November 1911 to link the Appenzell region with the Rhine Valley.
The route was originally operated by the Alstaden Gase Company, which ran the service for 35 years before being taken over by the SGA in 1947. Electric traction was adopted at the opening of the line using 1,000 volts. Three CFEH33 motor baggage cars were bought from SIG in 1911, and these remained in service until 1953, when the voltage was increased to 1500 DC in line with the rest of the SGA route. Two of these have survived. Number two is presently awaiting restoration, while her sister is enjoying retirement in the Lucerne Transport Museum. We are now running along the highest part of the entire network at over 950 meters above sea level. But our train will shortly have to lose over 500 meters in height, for our destination at Alstaden is the lowest station of the Appenzella Railways Group. After Stoß, we begin our descent into the Rhine Valley and rack assistance is necessary to cope with the gradients of up to one in six, by far the steepest part of the network. The Strube rack system, also used by the Jungfrau Railway, was adopted for this line. The railway and main road cross at only two points during the journey and the train has priority at the junction of Kreuzstrasse. The rack ends just before the road crossing and resumes after the station where the descent again becomes steep. Our rail car is ideal for tackling the steep gradients along this line, for although it has a top speed of only 55 kilometers per hour, its motors are extremely powerful in relation to its light weight. The end of our track is at Altstädtenstadt, which is connected to the main SBB line along the Rhine Valley by a bus service, which replaced the old street tram in 1975. A variety of old stock is used on this route, and our train returns to Gais pulling a colorful rake. The green and cream carriage dates from 1905, and was originally in service on the SBB Brunig line, while the two red baggage cars first came into service in 1889 on the opening of the line between St. Gallen and Gais. We've now joined the original Appenzeller Strassenbahn line running westward towards St. Gallen. After Strahlholz, the gradient increases. Originally, this section was rack-assisted. However, in 1983, the track was slightly rerouted away from the road, giving the line a gentler profile and eliminating the need for rack working.
The train in which we're riding is one of the BDEH44 railcars purchased by the SGA in 1981. These are normally operated as three-car sets and are all named after towns and villages along the route. The new Goldebach viaduct, carrying both rail and road across the river valley, was constructed in 1976. This 94 metre long concrete structure replaced the earlier stone bridge, and the easing of the gradient allowed the removal of another short rack section. While the station staff and train crew take good care of passengers during the day, at night other railway workers are equally diligent. Because of frequent train services, major maintenance must take place overnight, and while passengers sleep, work gangs move into action to ensure the line runs smoothly during operating hours. The construction of a new depot building at Heirisau means longer steel spans must be erected to support the catenary over the new sidings, and the opportunity is also taken to update the existing installation. This is a complicated process, requiring the removal of sections of the old structure before new cross beams can be inserted and the catenary re-erected. At the other end of the network, just outside Teufen Station, the track is in need of attention after the rails expanded slightly during an exceptionally hot spell during the spring. The work gang moves in to remove the stretcher bars and track spikes so that the metals can be re-gauged to the correct profile. Once the new stretcher bars have been inserted and secured, the rails can be re-spiked to the sleepers. Before the night-long renovation can continue, the initial work must be made safe, enabling the last train to pass. By morning the work has been completed and our train can pass smoothly over the repaired section with the passengers unaware of the activity of the night before. The station was originally situated in Teufen High Street, but owing to the narrowness of the road, trains were unable to pass here, 
So in 1909, the complex was moved to its present site. The Hotel Barnoff, now a short walk from the station, once lay opposite the stopping place. The old station today houses an architectural museum dedicated to the Grubenmann family, who built many of the local churches. The AB Group is an important employer in the two half cantons, with about 200 men and women on the payroll. Many of them young people who will ensure that the present high standards are maintained in years to come. We've now passed from Canton Appenzell to Canton St. Gallen, where we'll stay for the remainder of our journey. We need to lose 77 meters in height before arriving in St. Gallen station, and rack is used to assist our descent, which includes gradients as steep as one in 11. Our driver switches the lever from adhesion to rack to change the traction motor's power from the adhesion wheels to the cog wheel and also to raise the limit of the traction motor current. Two rack systems are used here today. The original Riggenbach ladder rack, specially adapted for this line by Herr Adolf Kloser, one of the line's first engineers, is now only used on the 30 meter radius horseshoe curve. The remainder of the section utilizes a von Roll plate rack. The church of St. Otmar, with its distinctive spire, overlooks the main tracks and sidings on the southern side of St. Gallen station. Our speed down this stretch of track must be kept between 20 and 25 kilometers per hour to keep the train in check. St. Gallin station is an extensive complex servicing a variety of railway companies. The Swiss Federal Railways owns the station, although the bodensee togenberg Railway also has running rights over the standard gauge tracks. The meter gauge tracks of the Appenzella Railways terminate in an annex to the station next to the Trogner Railway. While the station has only been here since the middle of the 19th century, there's been a settlement for almost 1,400 years and the magnificent cloister quarter of the city is one of Switzerland's premier tourist attractions. The city owes its importance to an Irish monk, Gallus, who founded a hermitage here in the year 612. He rapidly attracted a band of followers, and by the Middle Ages the community had developed into one of Europe's premier monasteries.
The twin-towered cathedral, rebuilt in the 18th century on the site of the earlier monastery church, proudly claims to be one of the best examples of Baroque architecture in Switzerland. The old monastic library miraculously survived the Reformation, and its priceless contents are now housed in a Rococo room, which is in itself a work of art. Books are contained in a series of carved and gilded bookcases, while the ceiling is adorned with paintings depicting religious themes. Amongst the collection are manuscripts dating back to the 8th century and a large number of early printed books. The delicate illumination in the ornate prayer books is a lasting memorial to the painstaking work of medieval monks. A flourishing town grew up around the abbey, and the surrounding streets contain many buildings dating from the 16th and 17th centuries. Intricately wrought oriel windows are a feature of the town, and beautiful specimens can be seen at every turn. No less than 111 examples are to be found within the city, the earliest dating from the 16th century, while the latest was installed as recently as 1938. These were once an indication of wealth, and local cloth merchants vied with each other to commission the most ornate designs. Whether you enjoy city streets or mountain vistas, the Appenzell Railway Network can take you on a leisurely tour through one of Switzerland's most scenic cantons. <laughs> 